and welcome to PhotoBiz Live. This is Jen from the PhotoBiz team. Today we are joined by Vance from our passionate support team for a webinar about quick tips for updating your site. In addition to getting the opportunity to learn from Vance in today's webinar, we'll also have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You may submit your questions using the chat tool and they'll be answered after the presentation. You can also join in discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag PhotoBizLive. If at any point during today's webinar you have any difficulty hearing the speaker or seeing the slides, please use the comment box to let us know. We will be recording this webinar and it will be available for replay on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash photobiz. With that being said, I'll turn things over to Vance. Well, thank you, Jen, and welcome, everybody. just want to say thank you for coming out for my webinar today, so we'll go ahead and get started into this. Um, so my, my webinar today is going to cover quick, t quick tips for updating your site. So we're going to kind of go over some tips that I feel will be useful for everybody for updating their site and also um, kind of an outline of steps that you should take in order to just make it as e easy as a process as it, as it can be. So what we're going to cover today um, and kind of the steps that we're going to go through and th the first step is going to be to update your content. So referring to things like your images. So, you know, the first thing you, you really want to do is you want to get all the old content off of, of the website. Um, just to kind of the first step. That way you can go through um, and pick your design and base how you're going to build the rest of your site off of all the new content that you have on the website. So any, you know, images or text, links, um, and any kind of new features that, that you would want to use, this is, you know, the first step that you're going to take in the process. The second step is going to be to pick a new design. So, you know, go through our collection of designs and find one that will best fit your content and kind of go for the look that you're wanting to have. The third step will be to update your colors, and I'll kind of have some cool tips for that as we get into it, uh, but you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to change your colors as often as you want to through your PhotoBiz site, and with the, the colors, you can also go through and pre-build out schemes, which I'll cover um, in the future, so that if for future updating, you can uh, really just go in and just switch to a different color scheme instead of having to rebuild every single time. The fourth step is going to be to update your SEO information. So this is a really important step for if you're if you've moved since you last updated, or if you're you know adding new new types of photography and, th and things like that. So we'll kind of touch base on that as well. Um, the fifth step is going to be to double check and update uh, your website. So you kind of want to read through it, have friends see it, um, and you can even give a, give us a call to take a look through it. So we'll kind of go over some cool ways that you can look through and make sure that everything flows and everything looks good after you've updated it. And the final step is going to be to publish and promote your website. So you of course want to publish it and we'll go through some things of how to promote it on social media to make sure you get um, people coming in to see your new updated site. And we'll also cover how to get your website submitted to Google so that Google can see you know, the updates that you've made and um, index those changes. So going on in, our first step is going to be you know, updating your content. Um, so what I'm going to do with this webinar today is kind of go through a couple points and I'm going to swap over to my live demo that's already built and we're, I'm actually going to go through and rebuild it so you guys can get a live feel for you know the steps and how um, you're, you should actually go through and do these steps. So the, the first two points are is always you know you want to update and replace any old images and text. So the first step should be to go through you know if you don't want images on your site you're going to remove them and get those new ones uploaded. Um, and kind of hand in hand with that is going to be to set up new pages, which will be step two. So we'll go ahead and switch over to a live demo right now. And for today's webinar, I'm going to be using the HTML5 portfolio site. Now all these steps and everything are going to kind of cross over to all of the PhotoBiz sites. So whether you have the content site um, or a portfolio site, you know, you'll be able to use all these steps effectively in, in both areas. So well, like I said, you know, the first thing, this is kind of what the site looks like now. You know, it's very simple. It's, um, you know, just kind of it's, it's old outdated content that, that we have up here. So we're going to pretty much take all this, you know, today on this webinar, we're going to update it to a new fresh website. So the home page, you know, you're, you're probably going to keep your um, home page always. So with this page, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all these old images off here. You know, I don't want these images here, so I'll take them and delete them. Something really cool with this as well is that you don't have to, um, you know, delete an image one at a time. 
you can take them and you can drag them and delete them all. So that'll save you some time there. So instead of going through and doing each one, you just drag across it and you can delete them all. Another tip I have as well is before we're jumping into all this, something that's really useful and really helpful is pre-build all your content beforehand. So I have a folder that I built that is, um, hold on one second, na navigate over so you guys can see it. It's called site site building files, and I have all my different pages built out. So my images for each of my gallery pages, and even text files here that I've already written my text in. So all I'm really doing at this point is, you know, I've got everything formatted. It's you know just clicking and uploading or copying and pasting the text over. Um, so that's something that can be really helpful as far as organization and less stress for you is to get everything built first, so that whenever you come around to actually going through and taking care of the site it's um, you know you're, you're just really clicking and um, you know just making page names so we're gonna be adding the home page here so I'm gonna go ahead and upload my new images here so under the site building files I'm gonna go to my home folder and I'm using all of these images so we're gonna check all and we're gonna upload so it'll take me a second to upload and um, as soon as it's done you know that's pretty much gonna be the home page there the home page will be good to go so as you can see here we have all the images up here and that's the home page done um, for the about us page um, we're going to be keeping this but we're, we're going to be doing some changes here so kind of going back to the folder section we we're talking about I've already got all of my text pre-built here so for the about us page what I'll do um, and as I'll open up this text file so th this is the text file. I'm, I'm on a Windows machine right now, so I use the program called Notepad. On a Mac, it's called Text Edit. So what you can do is you can type all your text in here that you're going to use. Then you can copy it, and you'll go back over to your control panel. I've got all this old text in here, so I'm just going to delete it out. You know, it's old, outdated text, not what I want in there. So I'm just going to delete that out and paste in the new text and save those changes so we've got the the new text new images in and we're going to be doing a little bit of changes so I want to add a new information page so I'm going to kind of spread out to an investment in how the process works so I'll add a new information page you can see it's added here and we'll change that to how not who how it works and again I'm going to go back over to my pre-built files that I have and I have something called the experience, which is just a little text file that I have already pre-wrote up. Kind of do the same thing again. We're just going to copy all this pre-built text. And we'll switch back over to the control panel here. And we'll just paste in that text there. So that'll save that. Now, just a tip for consolidating pages. So you don't have too many pages listed on your um, main website. Because right now, you know, these are two individual menu items. So to consolidate those under one that would say something like information, what we can do is add a drop-down menu. Hit the plus sign here, I'll add it down at the bottom. And we can just make that simple and call it information. We'll save those changes. And we'll grab one of these up and down teal arrows and move that up to the top. So now we can take these two pages here. We can take the about us and how it works and actually take it and drag it right underneath the information page. So take that drag it right underneath there so now you can see we have the home then we have these two indented pages so that it's what's called a drop down so whenever you click on the information it'll drop down that information there now I've got a bunch of old photography on here so of course you know you want to keep your, your your work updated you know fairly often I would say and I've got these old images I'm not going to use any of these images anymore um, so another tip for saving time as well is if you have large galleries and you're not going to be using that gallery page at all, you know, it's going to be just as easy. Just go ahead and delete the actual page. So you hit the red X, delete it, and that'll take care of all the images. It'll get them off the page. Um, that way you, you don't have to go through and you don't have to just drag and drop page by page. You can just delete a full page out just like that, add a new one in. Now we're going to be kind of changing the photography work. So I, you know, with this site there here, I was focused on one type of photography, but since it last updated, I've added multiple types of photography. So we're just going to change this to say photography, and we're going to break down each type of photography underneath that. So you know, as you grow, your PhotoBiz site can you know grow with you in that aspect, and you can you're always able to add new pages and add in new functionality. 
So we'll change that to photography. And now I've got uh, three different types of photography that I, I do. I'll do the automotive, I'll do the wedding and the newborn. So I want to add in three different gallery pages. Um, and I'll just go ahead and add those in first. That way I you know, can just modify them there. I don't have to worry about coming back and, and adding them after I created them. So I've got all three of them here. And I'll also, just like we did with the information page, just grab these two arrows and we'll move all these gallery pages up underneath photography. And now I'll go into the first one. So just a, a, a tip for, you know, your photography here, your first gallery should really be whatever your main um, focus is. So whether it's weddings or newborns, landscape, automotive, you know, whatever it is, you're, you're going to want to make this first gallery page your main focus. So we'll put this here, give it a name, then we'll go to upload. So we'll put these images in. And like I said, you know, a really helpful thing is to pre-build everything. So it's really, you're going through just naming it and you're just going to upload it. So you don't have to go through search file after file to find a select few images that you want to upload. So those are going to go ahead and upload for us. And once those are done, which they are now, we'll go through. You can see they're already in here. So we have our automotive photography gallery here. Um, so we'll go into the extra gallery. And we'll name this one Weddings. So again, super, super easy to do here. You just go through, click on your Weddings page, check them all, and you'll start the uploading process for those images. And once those are done, we'll go through and do the final page, which will be the Newborns page, and we'll get all that information up here as well. So we'll change this one to say Newborns. And we'll upload the images here as well. So as you can see at this point, you know, we've been here for you know 10 15 minutes or so and we've already got a lot of the, the new content put in just because we had you know a, a little bit of pre-planning there to save us some time we've already got our text written our images that way it's something that's not so stressful and really it's not so much of a time crunch for you either um, you know it'd be a really really simple thing to do now we'll go back over to the presentation for a minute read what our next steps are going to be so we have we've updated and replaced old images and text We've also set up a couple of new pages there, so you know we've got a good feel for their new content up. Um, the next thing is going to be to update your logo uh, if, you, if you have a new one. If you don't have a new one, then you know keep your old one there. That's completely fine. Uh, for this site, you know I've kind of changed the way that m my branding is a little bit, so I'm actually going to go through and update a new logo. So to update a logo, you'll go to under your settings section and click on the logo option. It'll bring you into the logo um, section. Now, you get a lot of questions on support asking, how do you get the, a logo that floats or a logo without a background? Um, and that's done by creating a PNG file. If you don't know much about Photoshop or know how to create one, uh, my, my two suggestions would be to maybe go online and look up some free tutorials. I've learned a lot of what I know by watching, you know, YouTube videos and things like that. You can go to YouTube and just search, you know, how to make a, a PNG logo and the, you know, four minute videos that'll walk you through simple steps um, to create a, a really unique logo for your brand. Um, or if you want something that's super creative and well done, you know, maybe contact a local graphic artist and, and, and get one made from someone local. So we'll go ahead and upload the logo that we're going to use. And again, going over to the, um, the pre-built section here. So we've got the automotive home, newborns, weddings. So now I don't see my logo here because what I did not do is under the, the, the logo section, let me close out a window. I didn't go through the original format button. So once you have the original format selected, then you can go over to where you're going to upload. I'll go into my site building files where I have my logo stored, and now you can see my logo shows up. So I'll double click that, and you'll see it here. It's already selected, so let's hit upload. And if you look here, we got the logo, the new logo up here, and then I'll just click update my settings. So there we go. We got the, the logo taken care of. We got some new content up there. Things are looking really good at this point. Now, um, kind of the, the finishing touches on this, since we have the new images, there's a bunch of you know, features that, that you can take some time to explore within your control panel, such as adding captions um, or transitions to images and also color shifting. 
So what I'll do, um, and this is something that's really cool within the HTML5 portfolio sites, is we'll go back over to the web pages section, and we have our home page, and we have all the images that we uploaded to the home page. Um, so we can actually kind of make the home page a lot more interactive and do some call to actions for people. Um, now what a call to action is if you're unaware or unsure is it's something that'll kind of show up whenever people first come to your website and it gives them options of things to click and leads them to other places on the website. So what I'll do is I'll go to my very first home image here and you can see here we have the option at the top for color and we have caption. So what I'll do is I'll click on caption first and I can give it a title. So we, there, you know, I do automotive photography, so we'll put up automotive here, and the caption will be click here for, to see more images. So the, the caption is actually clickable, so you can, they'll show up like on the bottom of the image, and people can click on them to go to other places on the website. So I want to link them to my automotive gallery. So what I'll do, I've already started typing this here, um, and what I can do is save changes, and I'll, I'll come back to this point, but I want to go get the direct link to my individual automotive page. So we're going to go over to that automotive gallery, and you'll see right here is your direct page link. Um, so this is what you give to people to go directly to that page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that link, then I'm going to go back over to the home page and to the image that I was just working with, and we'll go back to the captions section. And you see here you have create a link for your captions. So you can um, choose to do an external link or choose from a list of pages or choose none. So if you want to link in internally, then what you would do is you would click on choose from a list of pages and you can actually pick from any of your pages right here. If you don't want to link internally, like if you have a subsite or if you want to link out to your Facebook page or something, then you can click on enter external link and you can actually just paste in the link here that you want to use. So for the method I did, it will be best to click on choose from list of pages and select automotive, but I wanted to just show you how you would link out via external link to, if you had a subsite, you want to link it to a direct page over there for seniors or however your branding is. So now we'll hit save changes and we'll have updated the caption on that image. Um, now color, if we want to change you know, how the colors look on our site or make the images pop a little more, we can go into each individual image and take a specific color by just taking the mouse cursor and you know, hovering over the image. So if you want to pull um, just a color from the image that will make it pop more, all you have to do is hover over the spot you want and click and you'll see it'll autofill that hex code in there so um, you know you'll be good to go you don't have to know the hex code you can just click it does it super super easy for you and now we'll update that so that same process you know you follow those same steps for going through each image if you if I wanted to do the same thing for say this image here I can click into it you have the same exact options for both the caption and for the color as well so if you want to do any kind of color shifting you can go over and pick a color for the um, shifting now the, the color shifting I'll show you guys later on after we, we pick a different template for those of you who don't know what it is color shifting is it's like a, a color highlight for the image so as we're scrolling through each individual image it'll change the color scheme to accent the image so with our updated content we'll do a preview real quick just so you can see what the color shifting is. And you can see here how the red changes because it's the red that I've picked. And as it hits the next image, it changes to black because I picked the black color for that one. So it's just a way to help to accent and make your images pop a little more. So now we'll go back over to the slideshow and go to the next step here. So the next step in the process, you know, we, we've got all of our content up, we've got our logo, we want to go through and pick a design now. Um, so the reason, you know, most people think this is first, you want to go through and pick your design first. I tend to say no, you want to get your content up because templates react or look differently with different content. So you get all your new content up there, that way you can now go through all of the, the different um, collection of templates and you can see what one fits your content best. And a tip for this as well is you don't have to you know, save to see what, what it looks like. You see the, you have a preview button here. So if I want to preview what, um, 
you know, I kind of like the way this one looks. So I want to preview it with all of my new content on there. So what it'll do is it'll pull up that template with the preview and, you know, definitely need to change some colors here. However, it shows you, um, you know, what that template looks like with all of my new content on it. So we'll go back. Not, not a big fan of that template. So we can go through here. Um, and let me look at, this one's kind of cool. Let's take a look at this one. So again, it'll pull it up. I can navigate through, see all my updated content and see how everything looks. So kind of looking through here, I realized as well, you know, I might want to put an image along with my information page. So it's not just text there. It gives people more to look at. Um, and you can go through and see how everything works and functions on this template. So not a big fan of that template either. So I want to go through and preview a different one. And this will... Yeah, I, th I think I, I like this template a lot. I, I like the features it has here. I think it will help to accent my work and everything. So what, I, what I'll do then is I'll come back. This is the template I liked. So I'm going to hit Save. And that saves that template. So at this point, we've got all our new content up there. We're, we're set on our new, new template. You know, so what's the next step going to be? So the next step in this whole process is going to be to update your colors. Um, now this can be kind of um, intimidating because there's so many colors to change. You're not sure what changes what. Um, my tip for this is start with the big things first. So you want to set up your backgrounds, you know, your website background, your site content background, the border, then the text, and then the navigation. So kind of start with the biggest things first and work your way in. Um, so I'll go over to the site again to show you how the color picker works. So come over to the color picker. And you'll typically have some pre-built color schemes there that you can use. And if you have any old pre-built color schemes, they'll be listed here. And I, I have two tips for you guys for this section here. One of them is build out color schemes either for seasonal or for different types of the year. So you can see here I have a summer scheme, I have a fall scheme, and I have a winter scheme. The big advantage to this is, again, making it easier on yourself. You'll take, you know, 30 minutes going through and building yourself a couple color schemes throughout the year, and that way as the year goes on, if you're going to keep the same content, all you do is switch a template and just click, um, well, I want to change to my fall scheme now because it's getting closer to fall. So you click the circle, save changes, there's no stress there. You don't have to worry about what colors work because you've already done it at one time, so you're just switching over. Another tip is if you want to see how different color schemes work and you don't want to save it quite yet, you can actually click on the color scheme name and it'll pull up a preview of what that color scheme looks like with all of your current content. So as you can see here, it changed all the colors from the white and the teal that I had previously and put that new color scheme on. So what I'm going to stick with is just the fall color scheme. So I've got that selected, and I'm just going to hit Save Changes there. And that will take into my new color scheme and put it into effect. So you can see here we've gone from, you know, a very old plain template to a newer template that has a lot more design to it and, you know, has better fitting colors for what I'm looking for. Um, and you can see here the color shifting still taking effect, accents, the menu, and accents around the thumbnails and everything as well. Um, and just to give you guys a brief look of what the, the color picker would look like, so you click customize on the scheme that you want to use in case you don't have any pre-built ones. And you'll go th down through here. It'll be categorized, and then it'll have each individual option of what it changed. So the general section uh, is going to kind of apply to the bigger things, so like your website background, the website border, the logo background, uh, logo text if you don't have a logo that you uploaded, um, footer background, footer text, so on. So this, the, these sections are pretty self-explanatory as far as what they're going to change. If you do have any kind of questions about this, you get in here, you're not sure what changes what, definitely give our support team a call. You know, we are here to help you guys out with whatever kind of questions you have. So don't hesitate to utilize us as a tool for updating your website either. So next up, we have update SEO information. Now I'm going to uh, preface this with saying that I'm, I'm not going to go too in-depth into SEO. So um, 
we, we have a bunch of tools out there that, that you can utilize if you have specific SEO questions. If you go to youtube.com forward slash photobiz, you can see a lot of our previous photobiz live webinars and we have a couple of those that go um, in depth with basic SEO and some advanced SEO techniques. Um, and you can also utilize um, you know, the, the SEO experts here on our passionate support team. So if you do have any specific SEO questions, um, you know, just give us a call and we can definitely walk you through um, some more in-depth steps or if you have any specific questions, we can answer those for you. And we also have an SEO service, which is um, where if you have any questions or you're not sure about how to do it, just don't know anything at all about SEO, you can give us a call and we'll actually do it for you. Um, and then also teach you so that you're able to manage you know, all your SEO on your own as well. So what we'll do now is we'll go back over to the website to, to show a little bit of the SEO features of the site. So scroll up here. Now I'm on the HTML5 site, so it's a little bit different on like the HTML5 content site, and it's a little bit different on the Flash Plus portfolio. Um, but both of them are going to have this either metas or search engine optimization section at the very top. So I'll click there. And you'll see here you have your you know, website title, website description, website keywords. Um, so, you know, this example here is great. You know, so you can use this to apply to your business. So, you know, my, my title is just going to be the VM Photography. And we're located in Greensboro, so we'll put Serving the Greater Greensboro, or actually the, our area is the triad area, so we'll put triad area, and you can make that fit, you know, whatever location you have. So for my website description, well, things have, have changed a lot because we're doing, you know, wedding and newborns now, so we can put something like VM Photography specializes in wedding, newborn, and automotive photography. VM Photography serves the greater triad area. So super simple. I put in my updated um, information there, and I have included the area that I'm serving, um, as well as you know, just kind of update everything. So you know, Google will be able to see all, all the, the changes as well. Um, you know, keep these pretty much the same, but I'll you know add in some new keywords here for you know newborn and wedding as well. So you can go through there and add in you know the new keywords to update with with your updated content. So now moving back over to the main web pages section, we've added in a bunch of new pages. So we've got the new automotive page, we've got the new weddings page, the new newborns page, and whatever applies to you, you know, whatever new pages you have. So we'll click onto the, the weddings section here, and we'll go over to the SEO tab. You see here it's completely blank because we just added this page. So it's going to be the weddings page. So the title would be, you know, your, your business name. And this is going to be our weddings page. So we'll put something to the effect of, you know, our location and what the page is. So it's, you know, wedding photography. So when to establish a location with the type of photography. The description, again, um, you know, make it super simple because, um, you know, the first two, really the first two lines in here is going to be the only part of this description that will show up on Google. So you just want to keep it super short and simple. So we'll do the VM photography um, serves the triad area and has been doing wedding photography for two years. And that'll be it. You know, there's really th that establishes what we do, where we're from, and gives some kind of background there for how long we've been doing it. Um, and then the keywords for it, um, you know, maybe some local cities to you. Um, you can put in that you've been doing the photography there and that you're the photographer from that area. And you can just put in a couple keywords there that will reference that. You don't want to go keyword crazy and put the, the same keywords and same description that you have in your main section. Um, that's actually bad. Google looked down on that. So you, you want to go through and do kind of what, we, what I just did here, but branch it out and have it cover each individual page. So like if we're doing the automotive, this information would simply change over to 
instead of being automotive or instead of being wedding, sorry, it would be automotive and it, it would reflect that page. So we'll go back to this, the presentation now. All right, so next up we have a double check your site. So at this point, we've got all of our new content up. We've got the new uh, design chosen. We've got the new colors. We've got, um, you know, the SEO information done. So now we just want to double check the website. So send it out to a friend if you have a you know a close friend of yours. Send it out to them and have them look through it. The advantage of this is just getting a fresh set of eyes on it. You know you've been looking at it. You know whenever, whenever you read through it, your mind's reading things how it how you think that they read. So you send it to somebody else. It gets a uh, you know again a, a fresh take on it and can make sure that everything is fluent and flows correctly and that nothing's confusing. Um, for you want to review your links so if you have any type of old links page maybe an affiliates page or hyperlinks or anything that links out to you know Facebook or Twitter you want to make sure that those links are valid and that they haven't changed so you know I've, I've come across you know people from time to time that just have links in there from years and years ago that link out to an article about them or something of that sort and the article's been moved so the links no longer valid so they just have a dead link sitting on their site so it's good to, to check those from time to time to make sure that you know everything's functioning correctly now I want to go through here because kind of going back to checking the social media links make sure all that's correct you'll have an icon section on your website which will usually be under the settings it'll say icons or icon settings so we'll click over there and let me delete one of these real quick you'll see we have the Facebook icon and pretend it's just an old URL I can either edit it change the URL or I can create a new one um, just to show people how to create one um, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this instead of editing it and what I'll click is add icon so you'll see here we have the icon bank so you can choose from any of these icons here to add in um, you know your Facebook your Twitter you got MySpace if, you, if anybody still uses that um, the Pinterest Instagram you know all, all the all the main ones are all listed out here you can also upload a custom icon so the pixel size for that is 24 by 24 so if somebody provides you with an, an icon linked to, to their service or their product that you use for them then you can also upload uh, upload that here so we're going to put in the Facebook icon and we'll link over to our Facebook page here and just a tip for this you typically any type of link that you have it's always best to have it open up in a new window not the same window the reason being is that if you have it open in the same window it's going to navigate them away from your website and if they click on that to close it out expecting to go back to your website they're just going to close everything completely so by enabling it to open up in a new window if they close out of it they're going to pop right back over to your website um, the tool tip and I'll, I'll show you this in effect but this is whenever you hover over the icon a little you know option will drop beside it and say you know like like us on Facebook um, so that's what ours will say and I'll, I'll show you guys just after we add it we also have disable background music. If you have any music on your site, it's best to probably choose um, yes for this. You have the option of no and yes, but it's best to choose yes. That way if they're navigating to somewhere, like if you're linking to a video or somewhere where you don't want the music playing, it'll automatically turn the music off. So it says icon created successfully. So we're at the icon section and we can see that listed here. So we'll do a preview of the site now so we can see what that looks like. And make sure that that's the the look that we want for it so you can see here bottom right hand corner you hover over it it says like us on Facebook and if you click on it it'll open up a new page and take you right over to your Facebook page so if you have clients coming through they'll go right over and be able to see your Facebook page and everything all right go back over to the slideshow now Okay, so after you've had you know your, your site looked through um, and you've had all your content updated, you've made sure your contact information is up to date and that everything flows correctly, you want to just put on the finishing touches to your website. So the number one most important thing, of course, is publish it. You have to publish it so that it'll be out there for people to see. And the second step, which is what we're about to go into, is submit your sitemap to Google Webmaster Tools. So if you're not sure what that is, this might sound a little bit intimidating. Um, so I'll go I'll go over closer, but I can follow along and take down notes for this. But every time you publish your website, so we'll do that first. We'll go back to the publish icon, 
and we will just click publish now. Website published successfully. So now you go to, to the live site. So you see there's no preview link on the end of it. This is your actual website that shows up. You see here automotive. Click here to see more images. Pops us right over to the automotive photography page. And it'll start showing all, all the different photography there. So everything's working. It looks great. We're good to go. Now what we want to do is we want to get our sitemap submitted to Google. So we'll open up a new tab here. And we'll go to google.com forward slash webmasters. So whenever you go there, it's going to pop a page that looks just like this. So the first step that you want to do is you want to click this blue rectangle that says sign in to webmaster tools. And it'll take you to a login screen um, if you don't. I guess I, I, since I'm already signed in, it just took me straight into it. So what I'll do here, just so you can see what it will look like, is I will sign out. And I'll go back through that just so you can see the exact look it'll be. So sign in, and you'll get a screen like this. So what you'll do is you will fill in your information here, and you'll click the Sign In button. And it'll take you right into this, this um, you know, foreign-looking control panel here, which you're not quite sure what to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to add a site. So you can click this button here. Oh, I'm sorry, the change it. You have to actually type it in first. So you'll enter uh, your site URL. You don't want to put any www dots with it. You don't want to put an HTTP. It just needs to be your domain dot com. So we'll put in my domain name here. And you'll put in yours as well. And what we'll do is click Add Site. So once that's done, it'll take you through to this next page where um, you can either add a site, um, add your site map. It'll probably have you verify it first. It looks like mine's actually already been verified. So, so I do apologize for this. Let me take you back out so I can take you through the, the, the complete process here. Also, I'm using a different email address here. Make sure I don't have any code on my site for it. Okay, we're good. All right, so same process. You're going to type in uh, your website here, no www dot, no http dot, and going to hit add site and this is the screen that you'll get next it'll be you know you have to verify the ownership of your website it'll typically show you this version first which is the HTML file upload and this is not what you want to do so what you'll do is you'll see here you can click on alternate methods so you'll click here on alternate methods and you have a couple different options here if you already have Google Analytics set up you can just click this this circle here and then click verify and verify through them. What most people are going to want to do, however, is use the HTML tag. So we'll select the circle for the HTML tag. It'll give you a couple steps here. It'll say copy the meta tag below and paste it onto your site's home page. Now, we don't have a, a, a page that says, you know, home page unless you have your, a home page created. So you're probably wondering where you want to put this. So the first step will be to copy this. You're going to copy this meta tag that they give you. And after you highlight that and copy it, you'll go back over to your control panel. And you see all these icons across the very top. You want to click into your metas, or um, if you have a Flash website, you'll want to go under settings and visit counter. So I'll go over to Flash and show you guys where to update that. Um, but for the biz site, or the HTML5 content, and the HTML5 portfolio, you're going to want to come to the metas section. And you're going to want to paste that code you copied under this custom metadata section. If you already have something in there, just space it down a couple lines so it doesn't interfere with it. And just paste your meta tag right in there. Hit Save Changes. And then you're going to want to republish your website. So we'll go to Publish. It'll publish now. Um, now before we go back over to Webmaster Tools, for those of you using the Flash, you'll go over to, this is your Flash control panel. You'll go under Settings. And you'll go to Visit Counter. And this is where you would paste that code, is right in your Visit Counter. Again, if you have something in there already, just space it down a couple lines and then just paste this at the very beginning. Update it. And then you'll go through and you'll publish your Flash website. And for those of you using the, um, the HTML5 content site, you'll come under the Search Engine section. And under Visit Counter right here, you'll paste this 
right here at the very top and save those changes right there. So we'll go back over to the site we're working on, and we have published it. So what we'll do now is come back over to the Webmaster Tools. We've got the HTML tag selected, and we'll click Verify. And you'll get the message that says, congratulations, you, sex you successfully verified your ownership of, it'll say your website there. So what we'll do is we'll continue through, and you'll see this, this dashboard right here. You won't see this. I've already got the sitemap submitted, but you won't see that. Um, you'll probably just say n none, or if you have submitted in the past, you will see something like this with how many pages you've submitted. So what you want to do is click on this word that says sitemaps right here. It'll take you over to your sitemap section. Um, if you have submitted in the past, you'll see something very similar to this. If you have not submitted at all, then you will, it'll just be a blank page. It'll, you'll see this button up here that says add slash test sitemap. So what you'll do is you'll click there, it'll autofill your domain name, and then the link to your sitemap is just sitemap.cfm. So we automatically generate this for you every time that you publish. So you just have to type in sitemap.cfm, click Submit Sitemap, it'll say Sitemap Submitted, you can refresh the page, and you can see here, I had six pages previously, now I have eight pages. So it changed the amount submitted, and it submitted all those new pages to Google. So it'll take some time to crawl it, but it'll take your wait time down from like, you know, up to six weeks to probably at the most two weeks to get your new information crawled and indexed. So that's going to be a very, very big help for wait time for all the updates and everything. So, so yeah, and then, you know, the last step of it, now that, that you've got, so we've got the whole new site built, we've got everything submitted to Google, everything's running correctly, we know everything's running good, you, you now want to promote it on social media. So, you can run, you know, a kind of special to, you know, get people to share your site, um, to get people, you know, post on your Twitter, your Facebook, Pinterest, you know, whatever you have out there, just get a nice good burst of traffic coming to your your website. This will be helpful to get everything, you know, to again get feedback from all your clients coming to it, make sure that it, it's functioning correctly, see if they have any suggestions for anything. And it'll also help to get a boost of traffic in your site, which will be helpful for your, your SEO ranking. So um, yeah, that, that will pretty much do it. That'll cover building the website for us and getting everything taken care of. So hold on one second here. And we're going to go over to the question and answer time. So I'm going to put those on mute for one second so we can get some questions coming in. So don't be shy. Ask away, and we will definitely answer any questions that, that, that you have for us. Well, thank you for that fantastic presentation, Vance. We've got so much, you know, great information that he shared today to really help everybody with some tips and tricks. Um, we we're also reading over the questions and things to be able to help you guys out with even more information. First question come in here is from Ruth Stenson. What size and resolution is best for the highest quality and sharpness of images on Photobiz? So thank you, Ruth, for that question. Um, this will definitely apply to everybody out there. So we have two different image sizes that are, you know, the, the exact size for images. For the high definition images, the exact size is going to be 3,000 pixels wide by 1730 pixels tall. Again, that's 3,000 pixels wide by 1730 pixels tall. And the DPI should be set to 72. Um, you can have it a little higher. You shouldn't notice any you know, major difference when uploading. The only time you should ever take it down is if you notice the images to be over sharp. Then you should kind of run it down to 72 DPI. Um, and, and just to cover the standard definition size, is going to be 1,500 pixels wide by 865 pixels tall. And again, the DPI should be 72. Alrighty, next question comes from Mike. When choosing a new layout design, do you prefer full page versus smaller layouts for cross-platform viewing? Yeah, Mike, thanks for, thanks for that question. So with your question, do you prefer full page? versus smaller layouts. Um, I, I mean, with with the layout styles, everything is going to size down according to what device you're, you're using. Um, and I would say it all comes down to personal preference for how you want your images to, to show. Do you want your images to, you know, to, to speak 
everything or do you want to have more of a content based and have a background design so they're each going to function you know pretty much the same in that aspect as far as viewing so it would come down to personal preference whether you wanted your site to just be full screen images or if you wanted to have you know a designed background and some other features of the website to accent the images Next question comes from Marcy. She would like to change her home page, but she had some challenges the first time she did it with getting some links and so forth embedded. And she wants to know how to have a smoother time with embedding links and updating her home page. Marcy, what's your question? Because um, items can't be embedded onto a home page. So I, I'm. Oh, we're talking about a splash. If you're talking about a splash page, that can be done. Um, so, with the with your question, I would say you know because I'm I'm not quite sure what 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 the circumstances were or what you were having. So, maybe if you could clarify it for us, I could give you a better answer. Um, if not, I would say give our support team a call, and we'll, we'll we'll be able to you know help you out with any kind of of issue that you have or anything. Alrighty, next question is from Barry. Are the color and link options in the old sites? I don't have an HTML5 site yet. Yeah, they are. I'll actually, I'm going to go back over, while we're here, I'm going to go back over to the control panel here. So if you're still on the, the Flash portfolio sites, the color and um, caption options are still available. So hold on one second here. got to get the pop-up. And it's being difficult for me, of course. Hold on one second. Okay, so you can see here, it'll open up the image. So what you'll do is you'll go in, you'll click on the image that you want to put a color or a caption on. And at the top here, you have image, color, caption. So you can click color. It's going to work the exact same way. You just hover over the image to find the color that you want to use. And you can click on it. It'll show you the selected color. And you can hit update. And then you also have the caption option. Now, with the Flash site, you don't have the option to um, put like a link with the caption. That's something that only the HTML5 portfolio site has. So you can put a caption on the, the Flash website, but you can't link with it. All righty. Our next question comes from Mike. What's your take on music starting when the site is loaded for your users? All right, Mike, I think that question again comes down to per personal preference and just giving my personal opinion I am not a fan of, of music personally um, the the reason being you have to think about where your customers are going to be when they're opening your website so if they're at work and they have their speakers turned up and they're coming to your website and all of a sudden music's blaring they're not going to look for the volume first they're going to close out of your website first so you have you know the chance there that you could possibly lose some customers customers because of it now, the double side to that is music can also be a good thing because it can really help to set the tone if you have a very um, emotional gallery that you want to ha have a certain emotion hit. So I'm kind of split. Personally, I wouldn't have music on my site just because, um, you know, I don't, wouldn't want to run the, the risk of that. However, if you really do feel that you want to use the music and it needs to get across an emotion, it can be very good as well. Next question is from Stacy. Will this tutorial be available somewhere to watch afterwards? Yes, absolutely. We are recording it. It will get posted on YouTube within about 72 hours. Shooby, Scooby, my apologies for name pronunciation. Next question is about video. Yeah, so with, with all of our websites, you are able to either link to video um, or you can embed them on the site. I didn't cover that. I don't have a video ready. Um, so what I would say is just give our support team a call if you have a specific video, um, and we can walk you through how to embed it. It'll take about five minutes over the phone, so it's super, super easy. And I'll just expand on that, too. With the video, with the HTML5 portfolio sites, you have three different options. You can have a video play in a light box. You can embed video on a content page. And then there's also ways to be able to create video links using an, another page type as well. So there's a variety of different ways to be able to incorporate video into your site. Next question comes from Jennifer. How often should a site be redesigned? OK, Jennifer. So. I, I would say a, a good time would really be for, you know, two, two, two to the three times a year. Um, I would do it, you know, once at the beginning of the year, maybe once towards the beginning of fall, and then once again around, you know, the, the ending of um, 
you know, October and November, because the season between fall and Christmas is so different um, that it, it would be good to um, change it there. Now, I wouldn't say completely redesign three times a year, but, you know, more or less change the colors around um, to get everything. But you can keep, you know, your, your images kind of the same. Now, it is good to update, um, you know, all your content and everything for your, I would say your home page and your main gallery pages. Um, I usually recommend to update that information, you know, once to once a month probably. The advantage to doing this is that you keep fresh content on your website, so it's not the same website all the time. So it helps to bring in a lot of um, return traffic. So people are always checking back to your website to see what's new and, and what's updated. So that, that's something else to consider and how many times that you want to go through and redesign and update your website. Alrighty, next we've got a question from Christine. Can you choose auto color shift instead of doing each image color shifting separately? Hi, Christine. Thanks for your question. Um, currently, we don't have a way um, for, for auto color shifting. And the reason being is that because it really is on a per image basis. So if it was something auto color shifted, we'd have to be picking the color, which might not be the color that you want, which is why we give um, you, know, you guys the ability to go through and pick which color you want shifted per image. We've got another great question from Cheryl about building a splash page, and for that we're actually going to suggest that you watch one of our webinars that's on our YouTube channel that's specifically all about building splash pages. Um, they're a very simple, straightforward process to be able to do that, and we've got so much so that there's a whole webinar dedicated to it. Next question comes from Rob. Um, he has two sites through PhotoViz. Each one allows him to use a loyalty discount, but one is larger than the other. Each uh, account that you have, um, the loyalty discount starts once you that account has been an active member for at least six months. And so those do run independently of each other based on which account that you have. If you've got more questions about the loyalty discount, Rob, please feel free to give us a call. We're happy to talk in more specifics about your account. Next question comes from Cindy. What if your logo is not nice and long horizontal? My logo is a script-like logo, more square oval, and looks odd tucked up in the upper corner of templates. So, Cindy, this is a, this is a question that I do get quite a lot, um, and you know, it, it definitely is. A lot of the templates are built and designed for a very horizontal logo, um, so the square ones would appear quite small. My suggestion is that is you know to get a, a square logo to, to show up large, it really has to be really big, and it typically takes up a lot of the website, which can be really distracting and take away from people viewing your images. So, my suggestion is always this: you know, keep it small wherever it is on the template in the very first image that loads on your home page make it your logo nice and large so the very first thing that people see is going to be your logo nice and large then they can from that point focus on the images of your website and your logo will still be there so you can still have that branding throughout your website next question comes from Amy she's interested in our social media service and how that relates to some of the Google webmaster tools we have, so we have a bunch of different services I think um, that you might be referring to the the actual the SEO service. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of touch base on our services really quick. We have the the custom site service, we have our SEO service, and we have our social media service as well. Um, so our custom site service is where we pretty much go through and we will build the site for you. So we'll design a site to match your brand. We'll use you know custom design elements, and you get three rounds of revisions for that. Um, you can go into your control panel to read a lot more about it, um, and that's one-time fee of $7.95. Then with the SEO service, um, it's really, it's a, we've kind of changed around, it's called the SEO boot camp now. Um, so it is, you know, we focus on what your personal needs are and what you want to do. So we will, to answer your, your question, yes, it goes over webmaster tools and it goes more in depth into the Google um, an analytics and we also go, go through and research update and optimize your metadata so if what you're wanting is um, you know to learn more about Google and how it affects you what you're going to want is the SEO bootcamp um, and sorry about the price that's a one-time fee of three hundred and fifty dollars 
Um, and the, the one you're asking about is the social media boot camp, which is a one-time fee of 150. So the social media boot camp really just goes over optimizing, you know, your Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and you know whatever you use in social media, just to learn more how to you know engage fans with your business and to go over some tips, tips and tricks um, to be more social and to help you out with some design features as well. Stacy has a question about how many items you should have in your navigation bar. Well, the the I guess the magic number is always going to be seven. Um, depending on how much you have, though, it, you know, if you have more than that, I would say it's too much whenever you're viewing um, the device on your phone and um, it, it looks too crowded. Um, so you can kind of always look on it, you know, look on it on the website, then pull it up on your phone or your iPad to see how the menu items look there. And if it looks too crowded to you, then it's definitely going to look too crowded to, to, to other people. But the magic number for that will be seven. Righty. Looking through some more of these questions. Looks like a few of these are ones we've answered as we've gone over some of the other questions. A question here about what our YouTube site is. Our channel is youtube.com slash photobiz. Alrighty, another question from Scooby. When you add or rearrange the images on your homepage, should you republish the site or just save it? We got Scooby. So any time that you make any any type of changes to your website and you want to make those go live, you'll have to go through and republish it. Um, so you know, it, even if something as small as changing a page name, you'll have to go through and republish it to make those changes that you've made go live. Alrighty, then we've looks like our last question is coming from Harry. When is it necessary to resubmit your Google sitemap? Thanks for the question, Harry. Um, so with the Google sitemap, you know, you you don't want to submit it all the time. Google is always crawling your website, you know, and they recrawl a site every two to six weeks. So whenever you the, the times you want to submit your site up is if you change any of your meta information so if you add anything new or take anything out and you want Google to read it fast you want to go ahead and submit that site map to Google so only at times when you change and publish your site do you want to resubmit your site map alrighty well we've had so many fantastic questions today that have come in um, and be able to answer them here today there are a, Definitely a number of more questions that we weren't able to address today. Some of them were very specific in nature. What we will do is look them over and try to contact each of you all uh, personally to be able to go over some of those questions that were more specific or personal in nature to help you guys get those answers that you're looking for. I uh, want to also thank Vance one more time for taking the time to present today and also thank everyone who joined us. A recording of today's webinar will be posted on the PhotoBiz YouTube channel at PhotoBiz. I'm sorry, at youtube.com slash photobiz. Also be sure to check our blog and watch your email for updates on future webinars. The next webinar will be Making Instagram Work for You with Lou Everling. That will be on Tuesday, July 16th, the, our wonderful same webinar time of 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you again, Vance, and this concludes today's episode of PhotoBiz Live. Have a great day, everyone.